we're going to try it. Okay, so I know many of you guys already probably know how to enter an order and the benefits of entering an order under a party. But I was hoping that we were going to have a few more new people on tonight. But since how I'm recording, I'm going to go ahead and just share it. And then I'm going to move on to um, bring back my bar that's coming up and recruiting. So, <laughs> all right, let me see if I can. Okay, well, I'll just tell you guys. I didn't take any notes on, on the benefits of adding it to a party. So, a lot of people ask me, how did I build up so much stock and things that I have on hand for people to come buy for me at my house, which you don't want to ever publicly say that to someone. You don't ever want to put it on Facebook and say, hey, come shop my store. You want to stay in compliance in that area. But when I do have a customer that says, do you have this on hand? I can tell them privately that I do. And the reason why I have so much stock on hand is because I take every single individual order that somebody sends me, say Krista messages me tonight and says, I need a car bar and I talk her into a six pack of wax. I'm gonna take that order plus Rebecca's order and Amber's order and all these individual people that I cannot convince to do a party for me. And I'm gonna put them all together and I get to be the hostess. So I get all those host rewards that because they weren't smart enough to do a party with me, <laughs> that I get to claim those host rewards. So I try to aim to get to 500 for every party that I close so that I get free shipping for my customers. But then I also get $75 in free product, the three half price item and go under a different tab and claim the perpetual party reward. So technically four half price items that you can get. Um, if you don't have a lot of out of pocket to spend, I know a lot of times when you first start up, you think, oh, well, I need to go purchase warmers and you know, I need to have all this stock on hand. You do not have to have stock on hand. We are not like other direct sales companies that require that. It is just something that happens as you collect orders and you have all these host rewards that you're able just to collect things to have on hand. But if you are limited in the funds that you can put out, do a six pack of scent circles, $7 and 50 cents. Um, if you are super, super strict on your paycheck and don't have a lot of extra to spend, do a three pack of light bulbs for your half price item. Just because it's a half price item does not mean that you have to go buy a $50 warmer and come out of $25 out of your pocket. You can buy something super cheap. Yes, ma'am. Do we get um, PRV on the half price items? So no, because Cincy is already discounting and taking a loss on that item, we do not get PRV on host rewards. So we don't make any extra money back on that, but it does, Krista, correct me if I'm wrong, it still goes towards our end of the month, right? No, no, because it doesn't count as PRV, sorry. Okay, um, so sorry, I had to think that one through. <laughs> um, so no, it doesn't, but you're getting that item half price. When you turn around and sell it to a customer, they're going to be paying full price. So you're not Going to only make your money back but you're going to make double your money back so you can either take that what your customer purchases so it's right here mini warmer i just got in pay ten dollars for it i'm going to have a customer come buy it for twenty dollars i can choose to either pocket that twenty dollars i can put ten dollars back into my bank account because i paid ten dollars out um, and put the other ten dollars back into my business or I can put the full $20 back into my business. It's completely up to you as a business owner what you do. Me personally, I normally put the $20 back into my business. I know I'm gonna make it back. Um, you know, I'm gonna get commission off of that $20 that I put back in. It's just something that I do. I personally roll everything over. So I'm gonna try to share screen really quick. 
Um, okay. I want to share my whole screen, not just one particular one. Um, all right. So you guys can see my Sensi screen, right? All right, so for brand new people, when you see this screen right here, this is what you're gonna look at when you're looking for orders. So, ooh, take him out. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> take him outside, please. <laughs> Room spray. <laughs> bar. Okay. <laughs> All right, so when you look at <laughs> this tab, you're gonna have new open orders and history. So when we go into create a party, you're gonna create it on this tab. If you have a customer that wants an a item sent to them right away, they do not want a party to close, they wanna pay shipping, they wanna get it right then, you are going to do individual order. If you do individual order, this will not go towards your party. So just make sure that you're clicking in the right area. So we're gonna go to create a party, name it whatever you wanna name it. Susie's all bash. You're gonna enter your host name. Now I'm gonna click use consultant as host because all these individual orders that I've gathered up from people that don't wanna host a party for me, I'm now the hostess, so use consultant as host. Save and continue. And you wanna create one of these parties at the beginning of every single month so that people that want to go to your website and shop, they can choose this party and shop on it. I usually name it September's, um, I'll name it something cute, but like September's Fall Bash or something like that. So it's like a generic party. So you can change all this information on here. You can upload new images or you can save with the default. I personally recommend uploading a new image because that is the image that goes on your thumbnail. It's the image that they see when they click on it. And if you put something on there that's really catchy, it makes them want to check out more. Same with featured products. If you click choose my featured products, you get to pick your favorite items for them to go and view. All right, and then end date. I always choose the end of the, the month. And then this is your link that you're going to share with everyone. All right, so I'm not gonna go too in detail with this, but you start adding people to your party. That is shopping, like a type. We're gonna add Rebecca. Save and add products to cart. All right, so this is my party. This is where it's gonna list all my go my guests. This is where it's gonna list host rewards um, that I get to put in. And this is where I get to enter her information. So if she wants washer whiffs, I just start typing that in and you're gonna get items to put in. I know a lot of you guys know this. So I'm just recording for others. All right, so as you can see, the party summary starts the total right there. So do your best to try to, you're not gonna break this. So if you're unfamiliar with how the Sensi system works, play around with it. If you have questions, ask your sponsor, um, but you're not gonna break this. So utilize this. If you are not putting your orders underneath a party, um, you are missing out on a full advantage of being a Sensi consultant. You can sell all you want and make PRV, but getting these rewards, not only for your personal use, but you don't have to come out of pocket for your Sensi stuff, but also these are the ways that we reward our customers. I tie a scent circle to almost every single one of my orders that goes out as a thank you. Um, I'm at a place in my business where I've got scent circles galore. And so I throw one of those in as a thank you every single time I package up an order. So if you are not 
utilizing these parties and these host rewards, then you're probably going to see me tying a scent circle to the bag and be like, oh, well, that means I got to go purchase scent circles. Not at full price, you don't. You better be using your host rewards. So that just is a quick, very, very quick work through of how to um, create a party and add um, host to it and the reasons why you should do it. Um, if you have any questions on this, I also highly recommend if you are brand new, Cynthia sends out videos on how to do this. Please utilize those. Um, I mean, everyone here is here to help you, but um, be a seeker of information. Go seek this information on how to, how to do these things. Check your workstation. There is so much information out there on how to do it. Um, and if you make a mistake, since he is very, you know, they work with us amazingly. So just um, ask questions, seek information, play around with it, but just make sure that you're utilizing what you can. Okay. I'm just interested. Okay. <laughs> my husband's like standing over my shoulder. I'm like, what do you want? <laughs> Either sit down or <laughs> go away. Um, Okay, let's see. Chat. Okay. Okay, Krista said hi. All hi, right, Krista. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. All right, bring back my bar. Let's move on to that one. All right, so right now we're in the voting period of bring back my bar. If you've never been through a bring back my bar, basic explanation is since he brings back two times a year um, a certain number of cents for us that have voted um, for us to utilize in a month's time period. So um, with COVID, we actually got a almost two full months. Um, I don't think that we're gonna get that again this time, but right now is that voting period. So what you wanna be doing is you wanna be sending out your website. If you log into your website, scroll halfway down through the page, you're gonna see vote for bring back my bar. You click on that, copy the link, and share that with your customers. Guys, this is where I recommend, don't just post it on your Facebook page, go actually message people. Say, hey guys, this is out right now, and I need you guys to go vote. Like, let me know what you want, because I wanna get you some great sense, and I can't do that if you're not voting. So, um, check out the news tab on how often that they can vote and when votes are closing because i'm not going to go into all those details utilize your news tab um but the benefits of bring back my bar is that once your customers go and vote if their bar comes back then that is someone that you can contact saying hey the the bar that you voted on is back like let's get you some and then let's add it to your Cincy Club. Um, so also during this time frame, probably, well, I'll give you all a little tip after I stop recording on, on bring back my bar. But during this time frame is a really great way for you to have a, hey guys, I've got something special. Um, normally I will buy a set of the bring back my bars and usually us as a team will all kind of go in together. So we all get one cube of all the bring back my bars. And so you have a full set of one cube. So basically think of little testers for all the bring back my bars. And that allows you to pass it around for the whole entire month to all your customers and let them smell and decide if they want to buy something. Um, we can't technically sell these off to our customers, um, but you can do it as sample packs to them. So I'll leave that there. <laughs> um, but it's just a really great way. I mean, you think about all the specials that Cincy comes out with, you know, the wax collection that's releasing on the 19th. It's basically the same thing. Cincy is giving us a whole month of special scents to go out there and utilize to boost our PRB. So try to get that information out there for people to vote. And as it, as the scents are announced, um, there will be flyers that are created that have all the scent names and descriptions on them. As soon as I see them, I will post them on the team page for you to utilize. 
um, you know, if you have a printer and you can utilize that, print it out and put it in people's packages, do what you can to get that information out there. So does anybody have any questions on the Bring Back My Bar? Cressa, did I miss any like tips and tricks on that one? I'm trying to, un okay, there we go. Um, I put a couple in the chat. Um, one of the awesome things too about the Bring Back Bars is searching for similar scents that your clientele likes um and say hey you know here's a suggestion um like i know a lot of people i mean i personally love me some cherry clove chutney just saying it hadn't returned in like 10 years came back once i had it on my scentsy club before i realized that you couldn't reduce so now i have it not on my scentsy club so just saying if anybody's looking for a scent to vote for Okay, very close, Jenny. Um, but as Amber said, she needs a coffee one. Uh, Cafe Cubano was an amazing Cuban collection that came out in a very limited time for uh, our summer a couple years back. And it is like straight coffee. So mm -hmm. all your coffee. Yeah. That's that. what I'm screaming. We got coffee tree a couple break and we put that in our Cincy club so we have a, a straight up like it smells like starbucks so oh snap so well the cubano is more like the european coffee like the cappuccino without anything in it no foam no cream no nothing um so if you've got the coffee lovers and coffee trees still up for vote then you can that's also another one but the coffee cubano smells like i literally squeezed out the beans myself so um those are things too to look for you can actually search under your contacts um by items so you can look at certain scents and say okay well here's you know blue christmas it's got this in it so let me search this over here oh okay well now these people on this list all like this type of scent now i'm gonna hit them up and say hey 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 guess what's coming vote for it vote for it so it there's all different kinds of ways that you can make that work but yes i love your little like you know when you do the cubes and stuff it's great for the teams but i love to do it too as like a bonus gift for your hostess because maybe they couldn't decide what they want so now i gave you that you get that whole set for you that's yeah. your gift for hosting so that's my two cents i love it yeah, and I know last Bring Back My Bar, um, there was a few directors that have been, or probably SSDs that have been around for a long time that put out a flyer that was, if you like this certain scent, this scent is relatable. So if I if I see one of those, I'll make sure to grab it and put it on the team page because I know that that helps, especially with current scents that you're familiar with, that way you know what it smells like. All right. So <laughs> I always hate making notes because when I read my notes and I get so off track, I like just kind of winging it, but I made notes tonight. So, all right. So I want to talk to about recruiting, but it pretty much ties in with the whole thing <laughs> of why we do Sensi. So um, pretty much, when you're working towards PRV, and I know a lot of us join, and we're either looking at probably being a hobbyist, or we have no idea why we joined, we just kind of had an inkling and went for it. And so probably the furthest thing from most of our minds when we start up is recruiting. We think we have no idea what we're doing, and why would we even offer it to somebody when we are still figuring out everything ourselves. <laughs> so, the biggest thing about recruiting is it's really all about your mindset you know if you go into this and you're thinking you know there's no way no one's going to want to join my team i'm not going to go very far in this business it's not going to last very long i don't even know if it's going to work for me why would i recruit somebody we have to kind of change that mindset because if you don't change that mindset you definitely aren't going to get 
anywhere with recruiting. Now, you have the option with Cincy to join and just be a hobbyist and not recruit. That is totally there. You can email Cincy, you can let them know, hey, I don't want to lead anybody. And you can let them know that you don't want to recruit. That is completely an option. But I really recommend trying to see what Cincy has to offer you before you make that step. Because I can tell you that the first time that you go to a Cincy event and you actually get to see that everyday people, not just the high up people that have been here a long, long, long time, but just everyday people are changing. And it sounds totally quirky and silly to say it, but are changing their life because of Cincy. It is completely true. Completely. Guys, like I can't, I can't even tell you until you experience it. But when you start to see a little bit of the potential of what doing this could do, not just like financially for your life, but personally and I, I don't know, just for me, I can tell you with my story. Um, I didn't plan on being a leader. I didn't come into this. I had many conversations with Chris where I was like, I have no clue what I'm doing. I didn't know where I wanted to take this because of our, I would say, religious beliefs. I wanted to make sure that I didn't um, step kind of away from being a mom and a wife. Not that he holds me there or anything, but I just wanted to make sure that this wasn't going to be something that... I was like, oh, I'm going to be this boss babe. And it took me a while to realize that there was so much more that I was going to get out of this than just being able to provide for my family to go out to dinner to eat. Because at that point, that's all I needed. Like we had nothing extra. There was no, when we went out to eat, it was charged on a credit card. So if we were going to go do something extra. I had to find a way to be able to stay home but provide some income. But as I went along with this journey and I was asking all these questions and we had all these conversations back and forth, um, I realized that sometimes we make ourselves really, really small and we think that we can't do things. But each and every single one of us have something that we can offer to one another. Um, I may not dive with every single one of you, but there's someone out there that needs to hear a little bit of what I have to say, or even a little bit of encouragement from me. And so that's kind of when I started realizing that it was so much more than just a paycheck, that I wanted to have an impact on somebody's day, not their life. It wasn't like I was going to be this life-changing person, but it's, I wanted someone to know that in their darkest deepest, darkest moment that they had something to offer to the world. And so that's when I started realizing that since he had way more effect on me than just a paycheck for my family, it made me realize the worth of people and what an impact each of us have on one another. So I wanted to kind of talk a little bit Sorry, I kind of got a little ramble there. That was not in my notes. <laughs> um, so what is a front line? So we want to try to grow our front line because the wider you grow your front line, the better your business is going to be. So your front line is anybody that you sponsor. You're making me nervous. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. But, but I do want people to know I don't chain her to the house or my children or oh, myself. My. So you know that. <laughs> Well, <laughs> Krista gave you a look. He ain't butter and no biscuits, Krista. <laughs> so anyways, um, so what is a front line? A front line is anybody that you sponsor directly underneath you. Anybody under those people are considered your downline. So you want your front line to grow as wide as possible. The wider that you grow it, the more people that you can go down. So right now, a lot of you are either at certified or possibly lead. 
And when you look at your paychecks, you're probably only seeing about 50 to $100 maybe off of your team. And so that's kind of like, mm, is it really worth the time that it takes to kind of invest, excuse me, in the people that you're helping? Because it does take a little time. When you um, add someone to your team, you want to be able to support them. I mean, that's the whole point of being a lead or above is that you're helping lead these people. So when you're getting those small amounts, you're probably like, mm, I don't know if it's really worth the time. But if you stick with it and you get over that hump and you get to superstar and you get to director and you get to superstar director, then you'll start to see the change. I can tell you honestly, I'm a numbers person, so I do well with numbers. My paycheck is about 40% team, 60% me. That's a big, that's a big thing, guys, like 40%. But, and leading doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be these Monday, you don't have to do all these Monday night huddles. You don't have to do all the, the happy mail. I love to do that. So that's something that I do. So don't let me doing that scare you from wanting to become a leader. You don't have to do all that. Does it motivate people? Yes. Does it make them feel appreciated? Definitely. So I allow a little bit of that 40% that I get to give back as a thank you because I know what it's like to take, you know, work all day with your kids and all the stuff and have to stay up an extra hour, you know, after everybody goes to bed and do some Scentsy or get up at four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning and package up some orders before my day starts. I know what that's like. So I'd rather give back to you guys as a thank you for taking that time to invest in yourself. Um, so like I said, when you have somebody that gets underneath you on your team, you need to be leading from the front. You can't expect the person above you or the team to do all the work for you. You need to be leading that person and telling them to do the things like you're doing it. So if you're not applying yourself and you're not handing out business cards, if you're not having those conversations with them about sponsoring, if you're not, you know, checking the news tab daily, if you are not um, posting when we have specials, oh my goodness, guys, if you're not doing those things, how can you expect the people underneath you to be doing those things? You have got to lead from the front. Um, so recruiting. So the biggest thing that I've learned about recruiting is most of the time, we make the decision for people. We look at someone and we say, oh, they've already got a nine to five job. They're making tons of money. They're a doctor. They don't need Cincy in their life. You just made a decision for somebody. Maybe she doesn't need it financially. Maybe she needs to meet friends. Or maybe she just needs something for her that's fun. You just made a decision for someone. And that is one of the business, biggest mistakes is because you don't know their why. Don't make that decision from them. You want to look at every single conversation as what can Cincy fix a problem for them. So you want to look at like trigger words. So if someone says, man, I can't buy a pair of shoes for my son today, Cincy can fix that. Man, like I don't have any girlfriends to hang out with. Cincy can fix that. So like look for those opportunities or I personally, I have a few of my people that have had a little bit of depression issues on my Facebook feed since they can fix that. If you watch training videos, you will see almost, I would say over half of the training videos that I have watched has been a sensey person that has said, I deal with anxiety. I deal with having a hard time talking to people. I deal with depression and since he fixed it for them. It doesn't completely go away, but it has made them feel a part of a family and a part of a group. So look for the things that Cincy can fix for them. Make it be a solution to a problem. Um, so you can't 
control if they say yes and even control if they do anything after they say yes because it's so exciting when they do say yes and you're like oh yeah i finally got one you know and then they join and they don't do a thing and that is so frustrating it happens all the time all the time and the biggest thing is they're scared they just don't see the opportunity in it and they're scared to try so what you can control is oh, i was reading my notes real quick you can control what you do so you can control who you're meeting you can control if you're leaving your house to meet people you can control if you're joining facebook groups that maybe you have people in common with do you have a bull terrier join a bull terrier facebook group if you have like knitting join a knitting group um if you have toddlers in a certain area and you want to meet up for a park day don't go join those groups and be like oh my gosh let me tell you all about Cincy." join those groups and fix somebody's problem so how many times do y'all see somebody sorry um how many times do y'all see somebody ask hey i need to know about a dental um who's the best dentist in town you can answer that question for somebody and you can add them for as a friend and answer that question for them and there is a way and i will try to post it in our team page later this week you can actually sort people that you add onto your friends list into groups and so you can sort them into a group and that can be someone that you follow up later to build a relationship with be like hey did you end up going to that dentist and did you end up liking you know how did they do for you or did you find someone else build a relationship with people because that is the only way that you're going to start meeting people outside of your circle to finally get people to recruit so put yourself out there you have control of doing steps to put yourself out there it's not going to magically appear to you it's not gonna i'm going to post one time on facebook and and five months later i'm going to have a team of 100 you have you're going to have to work a little bit at it um but you have to have the right mindset um so you have to figure out how to put this um so if your mindset is oh my gosh like i'm bugging them i i they don't want this they think i'm a salesperson i'm going to say it the wrong way you know if you have that kind of a mindset it it has to change even in your regular business not just recruiting your prv business about posting on your facebook page if you don't change your mindset and and have enthusiasm and have passion since these products oh my gosh guys they have every sense on your body to fulfill except for taste this product should be so so easy for us to sell since he makes it easy for us to sell and if you're not passionate about it and you're not excited about every single thing that's released i mean not every single thing travel tents they need to go but if you're not excited about every single item even if you have to fake it a little bit like I do with travel tens, guys, you have got to change your mindset. You, I want to share this. I get, I get worked, like I get excited about this product. I get excited about the people I get to work with. I get excited about the opportunity. I get excited when I get my paycheck. Like if you're not excited about it, you need to fix that or your business is not going to do very well um you're not bugging anybody you're not you're gonna i mean if i hadn't have had a strange freaking inkling on a fall night that i was tired of not being able to take a vacation with my family that i was going to give Cincy a try 44 people would not be a part of Cincy right now would not have 
come in contact with one another, would not have had a paycheck, and who knows what else has happened because of it. I'm not looking at comments, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm trying not to. Um, but I mean, if I hadn't said that, that, I mean, in a way it's kind of selfish. So if you take that and you apply it to the people that you're asking, you don't know what it's gonna do for their life. So when I say you're not bugging anyone, you're not, you're, you see a potential in it and you want to share it. So kind of put that out of your head. All right. So who do we keep an eye on? So your top customers, for sure. The people that order from you all the time. If you're brand new, start keeping a list of who orders from you all the time. Um, you also want to kind of keep an eye on friends that, um, they're joiners, they're friendly. You know, when you see something in somebody, you want to kind of make note of that and put them on a list and be like, that's someone that I would like to work with. Um, but don't leave it to just those people. Those, those people are the, the really good ones because they're probably not going to need, um, a lot of, I want to say encouragement, but they're probably going to be go-getters and self-starters. So those friendly kind of outgoing people are the people you want to say, hey, you're probably going to do really good at this. But even the people that are quiet and, you know, kind of keep to themselves, they may go take this and, like Crystal, and go work her business amazingly, and we don't ever hardly hear from her. <laughs> and she's so good. Um, so, I mean, don't just hold yourself to that, but let that be something that kind of, you keep an eye on. Okay, so the so people do not want to join the company. They want to join you. So how are you presenting yourself on Facebook? And not that I'm saying that you have to go, or even out in the world, not saying that you have to go be someone completely different because y'all know I ain't about that. I am loud mouth, tell it as it is, be authentic, be you. So, but, are you just a walking billboard on Facebook? Are you just posting all the flyers and that's all they get from you? Or do they know that you're in it for life? You know, I had a conversation with a customer, brand new customer from a party this weekend. And she said, she was like, oh my gosh, I've had so many people quit for consultants and I've been on the hunt for someone. I said, girl, I ain't going nowhere. You can stick with me for life. So, you know, do people know that about you when they pull up your Facebook um, page or your Instagram account? Can they see who you are as a person? Um, are you posting a lot of, because we all know that we don't want, the world is ugly and yucky as it is. And people don't want that from the people that they want to have in daily contact with them. So is your Facebook post a lot of political stuff? Is your Facebook post, um, I mean, just don't post anything about dogs being hurt or kids being hurt or I will unfollow you in a heartbeat. I know it's out there, but it's not what I wanna see on Facebook. So is that what you're offering to your customers? Are you posting a flyer of this deluxe diffuser back here and then posting, you know, all this political uproar stuff right after it. You see how those two things don't go together? It's not that you have to be this pretend happy, but people need light. They need happiness. They need uplifting in this life. They do not need all that. And I'm not saying that there's not things out there that's important, but your, your page is, is who you are. And if you're out there, I don't know, just be careful with those certain things because I want people when they come to my page, they know exactly who they, who I am and they say, I want that kind of person around me all the time. I want to join her team. So just kind of keep that. Um, so <laughs> just a little thought to yourself. Um, people are always watching you. Even people that have said, no, heck no, get away from me, 
they are secretly back there watching and they are <laughs> okay y'all just need to stop <laughs> stop <laughs> so they are back there watching to see how seriously you're going to take this business because how many times do you go on amazon to buy a product what is the first thing that you do you scroll down to the reviews and you see how many stars it got and you see how it worked for everybody and if it worked so most of the time if those people say no to you or they want nothing to do with you they're just kind of sitting back waiting to see is this going to work for you so just because you asked someone yesterday and they didn't reply yes and they didn't reply yes today does not mean that two years down the road when your boss gave in it and you got a team of 44 that they're not going to be like oh she actually made that work and they're going on a trip i want to go on a trip even if you don't get to that far even if you're like hey she bought a new couch or she took her family out to dinner i don't know the last time i took my family out to dinner when people sit back and watch you and that's why I say sometimes with recruiting and why I don't tell you guys, you know, go talk to 10 people this month, because I'm a firm believer that it takes genuine relationship building and genuine conversations for those opportunities to arrive. If you say, I'm going to go talk to 10 people this month and I'm going to get somebody to join. Why are you doing that? You're going out there to do that for you you're going out there to build that for your team but if you say i'm going to see if i can find 10 people that need something see how that attitude change how it makes it completely different where i'm going to say i'm going to go have 10 conversations and if those conversations and i'm a big person uh, y'all know i'm a big person about prayer but those 10 conversations i prayed about and i feel like the lord's going to lead that conversation to where that person's gonna say one of those trigger things where, man, I just don't wanna go to work today. Opportunity just opened. Man, like, I wanna go to Disney World. Opportunity just opened. That was a genuine conversation that you were just building a relationship with that person, you know, homeschool right now, guys. How many people are having to homeschool their kids right now? And I'm messaging my friends and be like, how are you surviving homeschool over there? You surviving? Because I ain't surviving. And I only got one at home and she's a teenager. I'm starting that conversation with them. And I'm not starting it to, you know, can I recruit someone? But if it comes up to where they're like, man, I had to work. I don't know what I'm going to do. And, you know, that type of thing. And I'm big on not making promises. I don't know if this business is going to work for every single person. but I can tell them that I have seen people been able to quit their jobs because of Cincy. And so I will tell them, if you want to be able to come home and be with your kid while they're homeschooling, you can try it out, work your booty off and come home. You know, I've seen it done. And that's just kind of where I enter into that conversation. Sorry, I feel like I'm taking a really long time. Um, so build a friendship. Don't shark them don't go arr, 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 let me tell you all the things i just want you as part of my team um vip groups are great for building a relationship you know if you don't have a vip group work on it do interaction posts get people's ideas of stuff communicate with them the more that you communicate with them the more the relationship builds um so everything kind of trickles together so as you have to have parties to meet people to get prv to build a customer basis that is current constantly revolving as you build those customer bases and the vip group and you're talking to them constantly you know things don't happen right away some people blow it out of the park they get 50 consultants on their team and thousands of dollars in prv and that's great it can happen but for me, I'm a firm believer, everything takes time. It takes time to have conversations. It takes time for people to see who you are. It just takes time. And during that time, you're probably gonna have some rough 
kind of icky patches. And you're probably going to have some, why the heck am I doing this patches? But if you have a why and you have a determination of why you're doing this and that no matter what, you're not going to give up because you know that it can be amazing. You'll go through all those icky patches, just like the post I posted today about which level that you're at. And Orville has a keynote speech about it. I want to say it was actually last year's SFR where they're talking about their walking journey and you, the hills are way over there and it feels like forever, but then you get to the top of the hill and the view's amazing. I mean, everybody can relate to that. Um, so all of it just builds. And so you may not see instant results, but I guarantee you every single step that you're taking, if you are smart about the steps that you're taking, if you're intentional with the time that you put into this business, there will be effects that happen. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a few other things and then we'll kind of wrap it up. Um, so everybody needs confidence. This world is so hard on everybody. Everybody needs a little happiness. Everybody needs a little joy. Everybody needs a little appreciation. Everybody needs someone to tell them that they are good enough. And so um, I have had some very direct conversations with some of my customers. A few of them are on their team, on our team now. And the way that I've approached it was, and I didn't just say this to say this, like you need to think about the people in your life and think what they bring to the table. And so um, the conversation that I have to them, it's a very blunt conversation, but it is, hey, I noticed that you have this, this, and this. And I think that that would be amazing for my, for Cincy. Like, I think that you would actually rock it. Like you have these certain gifts that I noticed and I just think that you'd be great. And you don't even have to know the person. If you go into a restaurant and your waitress is extremely friendly and she's just the best customer service ever, you can have that same conversation with her. Be like, hey, I know that this is completely off the wall. Please do not laugh at me. But your customer service was amazing tonight. Would you ever think about doing, you know, Cincy with me? Because that's basically what it is. It's awesome customer service and just treating everybody nicely. And that's exactly what you did for, for me tonight. It's a very genuine, honest conversation with someone that you don't even know yet, but they made an impact on you. So you, the impact that they made on you, something that you noticed about them, you need to turn around and actually speak that to them. Um, you know, it's almost like a husband and wife relationship. Sometimes we know we love one another, but sometimes we actually need to hear it. And that's people that join your team. They need to hear that they are capable of doing this. Some people don't think that they're capable of doing something like this. They need someone to believe in them. They need you to have that confidence for them so that they can join and then see that they have that confidence anyways. Um, so kind of a thing here, be positive. All of us are busy. There is not a single sensey person in this world that will say, I ain't busy. I got all the time in the world for sensey. None of it. None of us have time. None of us. Some have a little bit more time than others, but none of us have enough time. You have got to carve out time for your business. And you have got to carve out time to build those relationships. Um, and not just with the people that you're trying to recruit, not just your customers, but your team. You know, um, there's a lot of times where I may not have stuck with Cincy if it hadn't been for Krista. She is my Cincy sister. She is not my upline. She's not my downline. She is someone that I can talk completely honest with. And there's no judgment. There's no, oh, you're above me. Oh, you're below me. I can't say certain things to you. You need to find someone like that. You need to find someone that is directly beside you that you can say, I'm having a gloomy day and I want to yell at everybody. And they can talk you down and they can tell you, 
you're amazing. You have confidence. You can do this. <laughs> and sometimes we're saying it to one another at the same time. <laughs> so you need to find someone that's like that. <laughs> So build those relationships with other people, and that's what Cincy events are about. That's where you meet people. If I hadn't gone to a Cincy event and roomed with her and had the best, most crummy SFR ever, then I would not be where I'm at today. I can tell you that. <laughs> so um, some have left me, and they, they have said I have not supported them. Hard to believe, I know. Hard to believe, but some have left and said that. But I'm gonna give you a truth right now. And this one's a little hard for me to say. I can believe in you all day long. I can give you all the encouragement. I can support you and feed you information. And I watched probably seven training videos today just to get this little bit of information for y'all tonight. I can do all those things for you. But your business will not go anywhere if you do not believe in yourself. You have to do this business for yourself. I cannot reach out to customers for you. I cannot talk to people for you. I cannot type up every single post, every single Facebook party. I, I just can't. Your business is not gonna go anywhere if you do not believe in yourself and you do not change your mindset and you do not take your business into your own hands. Research information, Google information, YouTube information. Guys, there's so much out there. I can't want it for you. I want it for you and I don't want it for you so it benefits me. I want it for you because I see the potential in it. But until you see the potential in it and you invest the time to figure things out for yourself, it won't last long. I can promise you that because when it gets rough, it gets really rough. I'm not going to lie, it does. And so if you don't have that and it doesn't have to be 24 7 it doesn't that's not what i'm saying do not get me wrong about that it does not have to be you come home from an eight to five job you put your kids to bed you work four or five more hours and see it does not have to be that but you do have to take the time to work your business you cannot expect other people to do it for you you cannot expect to recruit people and make a paycheck off of them and not lead them. You cannot expect the people above you to do the leading for you. That's not fair because it does take work. It takes work to encourage people. It's sometimes very draining. I will not lie this week. I'm a bit drained and I'm a joyful person. I need your consent on a few items to continue. No, you don't have my consent. <laughs> That was so completely random. Okay, <laughs> but I don't even know where I was with that. But I'm a little drained right now. But that's because there's only so much joy and, and drive that I can put out there for you. You have to want it for yourself. You can do it. I promise you, I will give you all the tools. <laughs> You guys gotta stop. Ah, but anyways, I can give you all the tools, but you gotta use it. You gotta use it. Okay. So last little bit. Stop with the fear. Facing a shark out in the ocean. Every shark has teeth. I don't care what they say. But facing a shark out in the ocean, that's something to be afraid of. That is something to be afraid of. You know, you're gonna freak out. But what? The what ifs are becoming your worries. The worries becoming your freak out. Your freak outs are you leading you to quit or not even start or not even see the beauty of things. So are you letting the fear of what someone's reaction is going to be or letting the fear of asking in general stopping you? Are you letting the fear of if you're qualified enough to lead? stop you from asking someone you know what fear are you putting in there because being afraid of a shark is fear asking someone if they need a little extra paycheck is not something to be afraid about and i'll go back to it at the beginning hi eddie um i'll go back to it at the beginning what i said several months ago 
if you're in an elevator and you pull out a pack of gum, this is a Laura Godwin thing, go back to our like amazing girl. If you pull out a pack of gum and you offer it to everybody around you, that is just being generous. That is just sharing. And if those people all around you say, no, I'm good, I want stinky breath, then you just say, okay, have a great day with your stinky breath. I'm gonna have some good smelling breath. You know what I mean? Yeah, just rub it off and let them watch you walk out there having good breath, you know, toting your pack of gum, maybe kissing a dude because your breath smells good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just don't sweat it. When you put all those fears off to the side and you're just like, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna message her. And if she laughs me off, I'm gonna be like, okay, you know what, no big deal. And you place in your next order, you know? Don't sweat it. Like, just build those relationships. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, that's why you all got gum. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording. Sorry I talked so long. Hopefully that helps somebody. I don't know how to stop it. Okay.